a few years ago, we published the first genetic study on hyperemesis, uh, which was where we partnered with the personal genetics company 23andMe. And in that study, we made the groundbreaking finding that this placenta and appetite and nausea and vomiting hormone was the greatest genetic risk factor for hyperemesis. But whenever you have a study that kind of changes the field, it needs to be repeated in a separate population. So the first population was with the 23andMe participants. Uh, it had 1,300 people with HG in it. And now we did a second study using a different genetic technique called exome sequencing, uh, where we're just focusing in on the genes and not the rest of the DNA around the genes. Mm -hmm. And in that study, we looked at over 900 HG patients and over compared their DNA to over 600 controls. And they were different participants than the participants in the 23andMe study. And again, the greatest genetic risk factor. In fact, the only gene that was significant was variation in, again, the placenta and appetite hormone GDF-15. So now this really, we've got two studies on this. Mm -hmm. So it, there's, it, it really is saying, yes, this is the greatest risk factor for hyperemesis, genetic risk factor, and the most likely cause. And um, so that's the main thing. Thing. It was validated in a different population using a different genetic technique with, and had the same findings. But it's also was, uh, it also is interesting because in this study, we didn't just find common variants, but we also found a rare mutation in GDF-15. So that uh, in, in the original study, you can't look at rare uh, mutations, you only see common variation. And so now we have even more evidence because we see this rare mutation and that mutation can kind of help us understand more about once we figure out what it's doing about how GDF-15 works and why it's causing this and how to get, maybe give us more ideas on how to fix it. So that's what we're looking at now. And then the third thing about this study that was um, unique and, and really interesting is that we, in this study, we included minority populations. So we, in the 23andMe study, they limited it only to uh, people of European, white European descent. Uh, and in this study, we looked at people of different minority populations as well. And even though we didn't have really enough to show um, strong statistical significance for GDF-15 because there wasn't enough participants, all the populations we looked at trended in the same direction as the white population. So I it looks like this is going to be generalizable to other populations as well. 